<laughs> Shadowverse. Greetings, I'm Shad, and you know the most popular video on my YouTube channel is the one where I introduce this, you know, wonderful little invention, the back scabbard, but it's not your regular back scabbard. It's designed so you can draw it and sheath it without any problem at all. And so, indeed, I call it the Shabbard, and like I said, it's my most popular video to date, because it's just a really fun thing that works surprisingly well. One of the things that many of you have been saying is that, okay, Shad, it looks great, we love seeing it in videos, but the thing is though, now when I'm wearing my videos, it looks very out of place. I made it as a proof of concept. It's a bit rough around the edges. And so I was saying, Shad, you need to paint it, you need to do it up and everything like that. And I was like, you know, I, I, I agree. I agreed with all of you, but Instead of, you know, trying to work with something that was already rough, not only could we make it better, let's also see if we can improve on its design, make it more streamlined, sleek, easier to wear, because this is fairly bulky, this one. So I've been wanting to do that for a while, but then, as I was perusing on the internet, I saw an image of, indeed, my design. It was a shabbard that was made for a LARP sword, but it was also made with really good quality leather and things like that, and so, I was a bit intrigued and I reached out to the gentleman who made it, who runs Blades and Blazers, link in the description below, and I've uh, commissioned something rather special, which you've seen hint at both in the thumbnail, but also in the, uh, the cold open to this video. So yes, I have something rather cool to show you, but before we get there, there were some questions that I uh, needed to decide in what way to go about it. For instance, what type of sword would I have it fit? Because I made this to match this sword, which is actually, it's not a real, this is a wall hanger essentially, but it's, look, it's a decent wall hanger amongst them, and you might recognize it, it is Aragon's sword from Lord of the Rings, it's the Ranger sword. But you will have noticed this sword in my videos as of late, because this is my favorite long sword, and it has had a very, you know, treasured place right on my side here, because it is a beautiful sword. And I was first thinking I should make a back scabbard to fit this one, except, it's not actually my favorite sword now. I love it, I love it. It's my favorite long sword, but there's another sword that uh, you might have seen only briefly here and there on the channel. That is my new favorite one. And that's this one. This is actually the English two-hander made by Windlass. And I am gonna do a proper review of this sword. It's actually not as well made as my Lockwood sword, but it's got my favorite proportions like this is a this is a beautiful sword and it also sits in that crossover area i've always been really interested in that crossovers between a long sword and a great sword because you call this a really long long sword or a somewhat small great sword and when you say small you're thinking hang on but it's huge well great swords get much bigger this one sitting on the ground comes up to here on me about my you know between my armpit and, you know, and top shoulder, so halfway there. But actual great swords could get up to head height, okay? And so this is on the smaller end of great swords, but you could call it a great sword. And so I love it, I love it. And the thing that really tipped me over the edge to decide I need a back scabbard to fit this sword is the interesting reality that uh, comes up when you try and wear a sword this big. Because the first reality that you need to face is uh, the tip hitting the ground. You see this? It actually get, can get stuck and you're like, ah! So how do you fix that? Well, you can make it hang at a better angle, but you have a pretty long bit of sword hanging out behind there. So the other option I did was to tie a bit of rope to make it a bit thicker so that when I put it in the carriage, it gets caught and now the tip doesn't touch the ground. But there's another problem that has arisen with it being just raised a little bit higher. Ugh. It's this. <laughs> now, I can get it out with a stretch, but that is not an easy draw. And if you want to do a quick draw, that's a bit of a problem. And putting it away, <laughs> oh, is an effort. So, this sword 
is on the very limit of wearability and it is still very awkward and uncomfortable and it gets in the way because of its size. So then, is there a way to wear it more conveniently than on your hip? Now, I have already been an advocate for the back scabbard. I don't say it's universally better. I just say it offers certain benefits that people might you know, uh, appreciate, and at the cost of certain other things, okay? It is a pro and con. It's hard to wear, uh, for instance, uh, cloaks, okay? There is an issue of its uh, protection in terms of rain and everything like that. And those are things that I think you can work around, but it just adds another step you need to take to work around it. And it's not to say normal scabbards are perfect, but they're much more, you know, locked off to protect the sword, the blade, from the weather than my back scabbard design which has that slit on the side opening but it does the primary purpose it fulfills the primary purpose of what a back of a scabbard is supposed to do my shabbard and that is to protect you from the blade okay the blade is very sharp okay you always need if you're wearing it you always need something that will properly protect you from the blade of a sword you don't always need a scabbard to protect the sword from water only when it's raining and when it is raining there are ways that you can get around to still protect the sword in a, in a shabbard uh, with having keeping size, like lowering it down, putting a cloak over or something like that. So I won't go over all the benefits of the Shabbard, but I will point out one of the benefits, additional benefits that I think that I, well, I don't think I've already said I know, uh, it provides is that it actually enables you to wear a much larger sword far easier than you can actually wear it on your side. Do you want to see? I, I'm, I'm excited to show you. So yes, let me show you the new and improved upgraded Shabbard. Check it out. What do you guys think? I am honestly very, very pleased with how it's turned out. So I'm going to show you how it works. And honestly, I wanted to catch most of my, you know, um, uh, presentation on camera. So I've only ever worn this once before in an initial test and it worked really well, but I expect there still might be a little bit of fiddling for me to learn the new position I need to put the sword in to sheathe it. Because something that I've learned about back scabbards, you know, the shabbards, is that there's actually an interesting amount of muscle memory you need to be able to sheathe it easily. Like you saw how easily I sheathed it at the beginning of this video. That was one take, no things, just straight out, bang straight in, because I've had a lot of practice with it. I haven't had a lot of practice with this one. So I do expect there's gonna be a little bit of fiddling, but I've already tested it does work. I'm just gonna need practice to get better at it. And so what you see as well, look how big this sword is, okay? Like, like this is a big two-handed sword and hats off to Blades and Blazers. You did a phenomenal job. Like, like there's a, there was actually a bit of um, back and forth kind of brainstorming between me and Blades and Blazers to figure out the best way to uh, execute you know, um, this design to make it look nice, but also make it function. Because we, what you'll notice is look how streamlined it is, okay? It's not bulky, it's made out of leather. And so the materials, the design all needed to be figured out. And I'm gonna go through that a bit later. But first, you wanna see it work? Check it out. <laughs> all right, now putting it away, that's the one I personally gonna need to practice on. So if I get it, is it in? Yep. Oh! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Look how good that worked! First try! <laughs> that was very satisfying now. There's one last little... Oh no, it's it looped, it hooked in over the leather. Did it hook? It's looped at the front, but it's not looped. Oh, okay, well that's an easy, easy fix. You just hold it there. And is it, is it in? Yeah, now it's in. So this sword actually has a really beneficial feature, which helps with the sheathing, oh, the, the lock in part. And yeah, when I say I have two, I actually have more than two. I liked them so much, I bought the whole store. I, well, no, actually, there was a little thing that happened, which I only intended to buy two, a sharp one and a blunt one. Something happened, which ended up that I so happened to have three now, but anyway. But if I approach the camera and you'll see, this sword has, uh, you know, little uh, protrusions, lugs, not, not like things that, um, you could almost call it like an inbuilt type of rain guard, but it's too small to be a proper rain guard. But anyway, as, and as you see, it hooks over right there. So it helps out. And as a result, it locks in so tight and secure, like this thing, all right, it doesn't fall out. Like you can jump up and down, you can run, oh, this is one of the best things about the Shabbat. So as I mentioned, 
the benefit of the back scabbard is how particularly secure it is. Like, like when you swing around, this, this is actually amazing. Like compared to an actual, well, I can compare. I've got another sword. I can do the comparison right away. Okay, so have a now. Granted, a proper, you know, um, sword that's connected is going to be more secure because it'll have like two ropes, but they're still swinging. And that's the point that I want to point out. Like, and you'll be able to see, like, see this thing wave around compared to the shabbard. <laughs> okay. Now, even with a sword that's secure tight, it still has swing around. And honestly, would get, I actually find it gets in the way more. One of the other things that we're wanting to do with the back scabbard is get the angle really. So it's not going to hit my feet, as you see there, but it's not hanging off at a really high angle. It's actually decently vertical, so getting in through doorways is pretty easy, even with a sword this big. This also has a larger baldric, kind of securing it in place, which helps distribute the weight easier, and, ah, uh, oh, this is just beautiful. Now, running. I do have to mention one thing, and this is something that Blades and Blazers will be able to keep tabs on in the future, because he did not have a sword to make this. This is, again, hat off. We sent him measurements, but after the measurements, there's still amount of, a decent amount of interpretation. Like, there has to be a bit of distance between the sword and the edge of the scabbard, how much to let it wrap around and everything. And so he had to do that blind, based off, we gave him very specific measurements, but still based off measurements. He couldn't test the sword in and out. And so he did phenomenally on that. There is one small thing that unfortunately is the result of uh, of not having the real sword to test, is that the, the scabbard, this part, is made detachable. There are actually tacks you can untack up here and unstrap there and remove the actual scabbard from the baldric. Unfortunately, this sword is a bit heavier than I think he was expecting, even I was expecting, because when I really jump up and down, the tacks can come loose. So I'm gonna do some running, and because uh, it's come loose like on me one time before, We'll be able to fix it very easily just by tying some rope to hold it in place better um, or even adding another tack or something like that. I'm perfectly capable of doing that. But so when I'm running around, oh, I heard it. I heard it right then. The, um, the tacks just came loose. Let's see if you can see it. If I get it in there, I'm not sure. So I heard one come loose. So unfortunately that is the only real flaw this one has, but you're gonna find out through testing anyway. <laughs> and there's no way, to, he didn't have a sword to test it. So the weight is the issue and we just, you know, I'm gonna secure that much tighter. And then, man, running around, right? Like, this is <laughs> so secure because already you can see how secure it is, okay? Bar this, the tax is coming undone there because of the weight. But if that stays tight, it's so secure, like, it doesn't wave around here, so I'm moving. I can be able to run really fast with this, and it holds it. And so I've always kind of said that I think an adventurer might very well choose a, a shabbard over a side one because it keeps your hands free and it holds it in place much better than a side scabbard. I'm not sure if you can see the tacks, but now they're done up nice and secure. Um, but when it's like this, I mean, I don't feel any waving at all, all right? And look at how streamlined and subtle it is. So one of the things that we did, and I realized with the old back scabbard, is that the guiding panel here, the wing, you know, like, so I, I call it the, the panel, the guide flap, the wing, whatever you like, doesn't need to be this big at all. Like, like compare, okay, do you see? The, that the one on this one is far subtler. I could bring it up because the main point I needed when I was testing it is uh, uh, always kind of flat there. When I came in, I usually noticed that it comes in here. You don't necessarily need all that extra space here. And the other part, because the sword comes down on an angle like that to there, the most important part of this guide panel is this part here, not necessarily at the, the lower section. So we could reduce that considerably. We might even be able to reduce it more than what I got on here, but already the new version is very subtle um, in its design because you just need that top part and then to feel it, and then you need something for the blade to fall flat against. And so you don't need much, just enough. So even just a section up here like that, and then let it feel in, 
and down. So I'll show you one more time the mechanics of how you shear the sword in a shabbard, just so you, you know, you get the idea. But of course, uh, sheathing a sword isn't actually the important part. It's drawing it quickly, because uh, presumably you'd only be sheathing the sword after the, the bad guys or the threats are dealt with, so you can take a bit more extra time if you need to, unless you're wanting to switch between weapons quickly. But the key port part is drawing it. Now you saw how much trouble I had drawing this size sword when I was on my hip. Just take a take a take a moment and everything and see how quick it is just on my back. So good. So now let's uh, look at the mechanics of putting it away. And again, I'm I'm trying to look for that that sensei. Ah ha! Right there. So it's interesting how you get better. Now I'll just uh, put the tab over the the parts so to lock it in nicely. Uh, right there, perfect. And then. Locked it, okay. So, it's interesting uh, the, the things that you're paying attention to. So I'm, uh, when I'm putting it away, I'm paying attention to the actual feedback, the feel of, uh, I can feel it getting cushioned in there. And then when I put it up and down, there's not rattling around, it's really smooth, it's like, ah, oh, it's in, bang, and down. And it's not a problem. And so, the more practice, you get better at it. This is again, like, only a couple of times I've been trying this and already I'm getting better just with these attempts and uh, it's getting easier and easier. Just practice makes perfect with these things and all oh, works. So now I want to show you a close up of the Shabbard, uh, this new one, and how we went about making it so under say, the design more streamlined, but also because one of the important things is that a Shabbard needs to hold its shape. And so I'll show you how we went about doing that. Of course, credit to Blades and Blazers, uh, because he was the one that figured out most of the problems, because I just kind of said, it needs to be able to do this, it needs to be able to do this, this part is really important, pay attention, and then he came back, okay, what if we try this, what if we try this, and then I'll be like, that's, I think that's the one, but he was the one that really brainstormed most of it, so credit to Blades and Blazers. Links again in the description below if you're interested in any, you know, you might want one, uh, but now I'll give you a close-up. So this is the actual reason why the tabs are on there. Um, and we just, we just need to engineer a way that it'll be able to support the weight better because with those tabs there, um, if I can get this last um, uh, strap off. Uh, there we go, it took a bit of fiddling. Uh, but so that part's undone. And the reason why we have it on tabs is uh, essentially, if I can just now, uh, ha So that's there, there we go, and so then, just like that. <laughs> so it can actually be detached. A um, little bit of fiddling, there's another strap I missed, but this one's easier to get off. And, uh, and so yeah, that's why this part is on tabs. And at the moment that does seem to be the weak part. We just need to, like I said, strengthen it, tighten that up, not a problem. But to make it actually detachable, which hopefully we'll go on for convenience. So you can sit down, whatever. So now I'm gonna show you how we actually made this. So how did we go about making this? Well, first of all, of course, was getting the measurements right, the distance. The next thing was to measure the draw distance that I can achieve with my hand and match it to the length of sheath that we can pull the sword out from. Because whatever length you can achieve from that motion there, um, whatever is then left, you need to keep open on the side. And so then when you draw it there, right out, just like that. So, after the measurements, we need to start brainstorming structure because it needs to hold it. This panel here needs to be pretty firm. Now the advantage is leather can get pretty firm. So that's the first advantage. But the other thing that we wanted to do, we wanted to reinforce it with wood. And so we sandwiched some wood, put leather on either side. It's been sewn all together nicely here. And then the other thing, we needed structure on the two sides because there's no side here holding the, um, the actual sheath in place. Now, interestingly enough, the design of this sword helps hold it together because of the, uh, the cross guard, but even with it out, it needs to hold its shape well enough. And so what are, one of the things we did, there are actual metal clips or tags that kind of make a flattened C that go over here, 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 and here. And so that helps the structure and prevents it from opening up just, you know, like that. Because again, this part is leather, but then these metal tabs are holding it together nicely. And then, on the inside, I like having wool on the inside. I did it on my other, you know, shabbard, and it helped sandwich the sword really nicely, because you can get certain cross guards where there's nothing, you know, just 
caressing, sandwiching, pressing against the sword, and they're a bit loose and you can hear them rattle. And they also can slip out. You don't want a sword to be able to slip out on something like a shabbat because it's on your back and so if it twists this way, you don't want it to just fall, like, actually, <laughs> don't want it to just fall out. And even like this, it's actually held decently in by the amount of sheath there, but it's actually held really firmly in place on the side. And of course, the other thing you want to do, what if you bend over too far? Well, let me, I wonder, obviously with enough, you know, wobbling, it will fall, like, ready? There, okay, so that can make it fall out, but you want it there to be enough friction for it to hold itself in place so just even when on casual bending over, it's not gonna fall out. So that's why I kind of like the wool on the inside for that nice sandwiching effect. And uh, with all those in place, there we go. And again, like look how subtle and understated it is. Like this, mwah. And the other thing, the wing, I, I actually feel it adds a really interesting aesthetic kind of feature to the, uh, the uh, you know, the scabbard itself. The new and improved shabbard, or a drawable back scabbard. I, you know, you don't have to call it a shabbard, I admit. Name's a bit, bit yeah. But, uh, you know, the shadow versus back scabbard, oh, no, whatever you, you can call it whatever you like in your fantasy. By the way, people often, you know, leave a comment saying, hey, I'd love to use this design in my fantasy. You don't need my permission, okay? I release this design to the world. I have no copyright, like, I have no patent on or anything like that. I don't mind, you know, just uh, credit now and then, but look, you don't have to, uh, because I'd much rather see people, like if you, because that's the thing, weapons on the back, especially swords, is a big staple in fantasy. And so having a regular scabbard on the back with the sword there doesn't make sense, because people can't draw the sword, people have done so many videos on it. So you just need to alter the design. And my design isn't the only one. I personally like it the most, there's obviously bias involved in there, but, just because it works so well. And the takeaway you can obviously notice I'm leading towards here is that if you're having swords in your back, that has to be taken into account of how they're gonna draw it. And uh, this design is just, I feel, a very elegant and now streamlined and aesthetic, like leather and everything way of being able to do it. So you can draw the sword quickly and easily from the back and you can get to uh, the important stuff, the fighting. Oh, it's so secure, I love it. <laughs> So I will say this in terms of fantasy versus reality, look at the size of sword, this accommodates and works beautifully. This is a big two-handed sword. It's a war sword, either a real long, long sword or a great sword, even, you know, it's in that range. And you can draw it so easily and putting it away, you know, granted, I'm still practicing to get better. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Ah. <laughs> putting it away. It's getting easier and easier each time I try. And so, this is a big sword. Let's just compare that again to a sword this size on the hip, okay? <laughs> and I'm not. Uh, oh, crap. It's caught on something. <laughs> I wasn't trying to make it work harder than what it was. I was being legitimately trying. The fact that I got caught, I was like, and look, sometimes I know I miss when putting it away on the back scabbard too, but that is a stretch, okay? I Like legitimately, this one is so much easier to put away with a shabbard than uh, on the side. And you're gonna be seeing a lot more of this back scabbard going into the future because now it provides me a much more convenient way to draw and sheath my, well, my new favorite sword. So uh, I, was, I was a bit excited to show that to you. Um, I think it's pretty cool. So yes, finally, we now we have something that shows the levels of awesomeness that a shabbard can actually achieve with a properly made one. And uh, I've mentioned it already and I'll mention it one last time. Hats off to Blades and Blazers, man. Really appreciate, you did a great job. Can you, um, can you see the Shadowversity symbol on the back? Can anyone, can you see that? Uh, I'm not sure if um, it's too subtle, but we'll, I'll find out in editing, I guess. But yeah, really, really cool stuff. And again, links, Blades and Blazers, if any of you guys are interested in his work, uh, in the description below. Thank you for watching, I hope you've enjoyed, and of course, I hope to see you in the next video here on Shadowversity. So until that time, farewell, and uh, Oh, <laughs>